Today, we're going to be taking a look at that ubiquitous flower known by just about every forager in the Northern Hemisphere, the humble dandelion. But since this easily recognized flower is taught in just about every foraging class and mentioned in every beginner to intermediate book on foraging, I'm only going to touch upon its identification in a cursory manner. And then, we're going to take a look at my absolute favorite thing to do with dandelions, turning the flowers into tempura. The dandelion is in the Asterisce family, and you have probably heard in history or foraging books how the dandelion followed early pilgrims to North America. This isn't true. The dandelion is also native to North America. In fact, there are quite a few species of dandelions that can be found native throughout the Northern Hemisphere. From a basal rosette of leaves, which we will come back to later, the dandelion will sprout one to multiple stems. The stems are usually, but not always, leafless. They are hollow, and they develop a sparse, fine white fuzz. If cut or snapped neatly, it is easy to see that they exude a milky white latex. Atop the stems are what people usually think of as dandelion flowers. As is typical with Asterache, these are actually complex inflorescences, a grouping of flowers designed by nature to make reproduction more efficient. Each of what appears to be the many yellow petals is actually a ray floret, a small flower in its own right, and will contribute its part to reproduction with the later creation of a single seed. If the flowers reach maturity, they will produce blowballs, a spherical collection of seeds with their parachutes that readily blow away on the wind, making the dandelion very efficient at reproduction. The parachute is called a pappus, and the seed is enclosed within a fruit called an achene. The leaves themselves are simple and deeply lobed, and may be 5 to 25 centimeters long depending on growing conditions. The petioles, the central vein of the leaves, tend toward white toward the upper parts of the leaf, and brownish red down near the base of the rosette, and the leaf lobes are very deep, usually not quite reaching the petioles toward the top of the leaf, but often all but touching it toward the base of the leaf. Finally, if you were to dig up a dandelion, you would find a whitish carrot or parsnip shaped taproot that can be quite large if the soil is deep and fertile. Coffee drinkers I know swear that the taproot tastes just like coffee. Personally, I never touch coffee and can't stand the taste of it so I wouldn't know. As with all foraging, be careful as you dig about so that you do not disturb wildlife. The wildlife typically need the land more than you do. While collecting dandelion blossoms for this video, I came upon the tiny nest of a dark-eyed junco sparrow. This species likes to nest in open ground at locations offering concealment. Upon discovering the nest, I left the area, and she soon returned. All parts of the dandelion are edible and nutritious, and they're probably best known for the use in salads and dandelion wine. I've tried them all, and I can't honestly say I'm all that fond of dandelion wine. I do like to use the leaves in salad, and I occasionally like to make a cold tea from the flowers, and my wife enjoys using the tap roots as a coffee substitute. But it's dandelion flower tempura that gets my attention. In fact, it's one of my favorite recipes. Daphne's going to show how to make it. So to make the tempura batter, we have a cup of flour, some salt, an egg, and three quarter cup of water. Well, for the best results, all the ingredients should be cold. So we'll start with pouring the water into the bowl. And we add the egg to the water. I like to use chopsticks to do the blending. It just works best for me. Blend it all up. Add a bit of salt to help activate the flour. And add the egg and water. And just blend till it's all mixed. Doesn't matter if there's lumps left. I just want to lightly blend it. I'm going to test the oil to see if it's up to temperature. Depending on the oil, it could take eight to 10 minutes. I'm going to drop a bit of batter in and it should bounce right back up. So that's about warm enough to start. We'll take this piece out so it doesn't overcook and change the flavor of the oil. 
we will take our dandelion we'll pull off the excess stem And that's it for the first round. We don't want to fill more than half the surface area of the pot or the oil will cool too quickly. When we flip it, it'll be a golden brown. And there you have it, delicious dandelion tempura. It's just that simple. As always, thank you for watching. If you appreciate these programs, please take a moment to subscribe. It sure helps a lot.